Welcome back to the Tyler Show. I'm your host, Tyler Zubair, and today we'll talk about Elon Musk, specifically his tweets. So who's who's for Elon? I'm for Elon. I agree with some of his statements to an extent. Who disagrees with Elon? Us. Me. Since it's harder to argue for Elon, I'll let Naveen start first and I'll add to him, I'll add to him if I need to. I think it kind of comes down to quality of life, in my opinion. And it's like if people are happier with or without a lockdown. In a way, I would say you'd individually, you feel happier with, you might not feel as safe, but you feel happier without a lockdown as it means you are more free to go about your daily business, do whatever. And what people don't realize is naturally the general attendance of all these social gatherings or public gatherings would decrease anyway. So in a lot of countries like any like that didn't implement the lockdown, such as Sweden, the amount of people in Paul was reduced by like fifty percent or something like that. Um so I think what it comes down to is I think people should be educated about it and aware, but they should have the option to choose to go on lockdown or not to stay at home or not. Like people don't realize it's a um choice to stay in or out. If you really don't feel safe, then stay in. If you do, if you do uh, feel safe, then yeah, go out, do whatever business you want. So we're basically trying to say, rather than enforcing a law, give them a choice, right? Yes. And with whatever necessary precautions, sand, sanitary requirements that are put in place, etc. What I would say is, yeah, naturally speaking, if there's a global pandemic going on, you're not going to go outside that often as you normally do anyways. Like even if it wasn't a lockdown, you're much less likely to go outside knowing there's a pandemic going on than if there wasn't. So yeah, like like you said, uh, lockdown helps, but it doesn't have to be in place for it to reduce number of t- time people go outside and stuff. But let's look at the other side. Yeah, I I don't agree with Elon. I I don't think they should lift the lockdowns now because US is not at a point where they're comfortable with opening up the streets again. Their numbers, looking at number of cases, looking at the number of deaths per day, hasn't been going down. Uh, the graphs are just staying relatively the same as last month so far and if it's not going down then they should really shouldn't be going out we need the lockdown to minimize the number of spread of the virus and to keep people safe because the more people that get sick the more the hospitals will fill up and if the u.s can't handle that then there's going to be a big problem where people are going to die and we don't want that so i think they should keep the lockdown in place until the number of cases daily drops down just like malaysia's is malaysia they lock down, number of cases is going down, and they're easing it now. Which is, I think, the right way to do it. But US, not yet. I don't think it's the right time yet. Yeah, so I think it's really important that we realize that we are talking about America. And I know that as a European, we have a bit of a tendency to throw shade on the Yankees. But if you look at the list of places with the most coronavirus infections, number one on the list is America which it's ridiculous if you think about it. The second one is Spain, but if you want to get technical, the second one could be New York. I mean, New York alone, just the city, has more infections than literally every other country in the world right now, probably not China, but their numbers, I don't trust them for one bit. Um, So I think it's important that we realize that we're talking about the American population, who in the middle of a pandemic by which they are the most affected, are going out on the streets, blocking the ambulance entrances to hospitals and protesting against the restrictions that are supposed to save their lives. And I mean, I love Elon Musk. I I literally have a poster, handmade poster, right above my desk right now with my man's face on it. I love the guy. But, you know, if it comes to space, I want his opinion. If it comes to cars, I want his opinion. If it comes to boring a tunnel under Los Angeles, I want his opinion. But if it comes to a worldwide pandemic, I'll stick with the doctors, to be perfectly honest with you. And I don't think he should be giving his opinion out, especially when he has this big of a reach. I think I agree with what Mahan is saying, that yeah, it's alright to have an opinion on stuff, and you can give your opinion. But when, you have, when you're such a high-valued person like Elon is, even if it's a shit opinion, there will be people who take that opinion as a fact, and we'll just go with it. Now I'm going to talk about this, some of the statistics. So the general death rate in New York City, which is the most affected area in the world by far, the mortality rate due to the coronavirus for people aged 18 to 45 is 0.01%. That's what, basically one in every 10,000 or so people. And for patients above 75 years old, it is 0.8%. Now, out of all the fatal cases, 90% of those fatal cases, people had an underlying health issue. Now, these are still very significant values. I completely understand that. 
and it's not something to downplay how serious the virus is, it's still a very serious thing. But what this does show is that it is the older demographic, the people who are older and who have these uh, health issues, they're the ones who are at the highest risk, so they're the ones that should be protected the most. So if they understand, they realize they're old, they have such health issues, they should choose not to go out or keep in contact with people who go out. So what I suggest is that like governments could implement a strategy such that no one in a household with a person who fits a demographic are allowed to go out the demographic being old, health conditions, whatever. So if you're in a household with anyone that fits a demographic, you are not allowed to go out and you should be allowed to work from home. Now, this will not be a majority at all, but this will be quite a few people. However, it does mean that worst case scenario, you have to work from home or you'll lose your jobs, but that is only for a select amount of people, whereas affecting the entire population, every single person, even though they're not really gonna directly impact anyone, that is a much worse scenario from an economic point of view or many different points of views. Because the issue with this is that a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs and they have lost their jobs. So by implementing the strategy that I suggest, there will be the unemployment rate would decrease a lot con compared to what it is currently. Adding to what Naveen said, I, I looked at the states in the US. The graph shows that rate at which new cases are being found are decreasing severely. And there are cities, or so there are states where the new cases are plateauing, but there are also states where new cases are rising. So it's a mixture of both. Because the fact that US is so huge, you're gonna get like a variance in case studies. And one of the things found was the cases per million isn't as high as other countries. So UK has much worse cases per million compared to the US. I think it's about, uh, US is about 190 and UK has about 300-ish or so. So UK has a much worse cases per million and UK already has a lockdown in place. But the problem with the whole lockdown thing is, the reason why I understand why Elon Musk is arguing for taking a lockdown off, the economy is suffering so much because of lockdown. Some might argue the effects of the economy of how many people losing their jobs and income is a much worse effect than actually dying because some people are breadwinners for their family and if they lose their income they will not be able to pay their rent or like their loans etc the government might help with giving them a thousand dollars per month but realistically if you have family of four that's not going to be enough right so in other so some cases a lockdown is more counterproductive than productive I agree with Naveen, so I give them a choice of whether they want to work or not. Alright, well, Naveen mentioned the death toll, and I think that is very important that we, we look at that. And I think that there's there's no better case study that we can look at than Italy, right? Because Italy is, is exactly what happens when the medical system becomes overwhelmed. So I, I have the little coronavirus tracker here. So in Lombardy, Italy, you have 40,000 currently, 40,000 active cases, 17,000 recovered cases, and 13,000 fatal cases which if you do a little bit of quick maths with those numbers you get a fatality rate of about 20 percent which is not the fatality rate of the coronavirus but i think it it shows i mean we've all seen those graphs right and we've all heard the the expression flatten the curve a lot of people compare it to the flu and i think that's important so i'm gonna i'm gonna lay down some medical facts on you right here okay so the the big difference between the coronavirus and the flu that makes the coronavirus so much worse is that the flu has a transmission rate of 1.3 which means that every Everybody that gets it will infect 1.3 other people and that's a pretty linear transmission rate but the coronavirus has a, a rate of two point something I forget exactly what it is but it's above two so that means that every person that gets the coronavirus will on average give it to two more people which makes it spread much much faster I mean we've seen it you know you have a country it has like 50 cases and in five days it's in the thousands and the thing with it is only a few of the flu cases are so bad that you need to go to the hospital. But approximately 20% of people with coronavirus need to go to the hospital. Now, since it's a pulmonary infection, if you are in that 20% where you need to go to the hospital, you will need a ventilator. Otherwise, your chances of death go from the regular, you know, 1% to 2% that we see in most places and suddenly jumps very high. So as long as there are enough ICU beds and ventilators for everybody that has those symptoms, it'll be fine and it'll be barely worse than the flu. But the moment more people get infected and the amount of people that need to be in those beds goes above that, we will all of a sudden get a much, much higher death toll. And I think that that's the important part. Like China went into a full on lockdown and like they built hospitals, they really put the effort in to provide medical support as well as to distance people from each other so that it doesn't spread. 
and we're a bit unsure about the numbers looks like it has gone down they've lifted the lockdown but the real question is until there's a proper vaccine developed for the virus there's going to be a chance of a rebound and there's going to be a chance that when you lift the lockdown maybe that one of one or two people that still have the virus that they don't know are going to pass it along again of course it's exponential growth so one person passes to another those two passes to two people it all just exponentially grows again and we'll, we'll be back into another lockdown so the lockdown needs to happen for quite a while until the, the numbers die down and so that we distance people from each other so they don't spread it to each other there's also the issue with testing like right now of course every country has more demand and supply for test kits and because of that the the lot of countries that need to prioritize their testing and us isn't one of them there's a lot of different companies doing testing for the COVID 19 in the us and uh, there's countries like south korea where they're prioritizing testing for specific people i don't know how it's done but they're prioritizing it so that's helped them uh, get the right people tested and get the right people under the medical help that they need but i heard an interview by bill gates and he said that as long as there's no vaccine for it we need to be cautious and we need to put people away from each other so that it doesn't spread and even if we come out of a lockdown there's a good chance of a rebound happening again me into the lockdown is people saying like so i understand the whole safety situation and everything but it's created a severe loss of jobs and income for a lot of people and some people might argue like oh like look america has billions and billions of dollars or whatever so america can surely give some care packages to the entire population but knowing america they're not really going to do that i think there's a lot of secondary like backlash you're going to get from this so things like general productivity of all these jobs is decreased rapidly and my opinion i think following the lockdown people can have one of two mindsets so one of them is positive mindset was like okay i've been lazing around for the past few months working from home had time to think and now i really have the urge to work really hard in this workplace environment or the more realistic mindset that a lot of us are going to have is i've been lazing around for the past few months and now i find it difficult to motivate myself to work harder i've kind of forgot i've not been studying properly i've been working properly uh, i've gone into a lull and become accustomed to working lazily from home and that is purely down to being in a lockdown situation so because of that the productivity of business and productivity of general things is gonna plummet yep. mental health is also a general issue that's like a long-term thing people who aren't mentally stable find this very difficult to cope through i agree I- i'm going crazy bro you have no idea yeah exactly it's g- it'd be driving a lot of us crazy crazy enough to do a podcast crazy enough to talk to talha willingly i think about killing people 10 times a day that normally isn't anywhere n- near above three it's usually just three I swear. The big thing here is I don't think we really know how bad it can really get because for one, China, you know, tried to like hide it for the first month. So all the numbers that they have, I don't think we should really be taking them into these considerations. So we don't really know how bad it could get if we completely lift all restrictions. For all we know, we can make it through. For all we know, you know, we're going to get a bubonic plague scenario here. Obviously not as bad because we have like medicine and shit, but still. The general consensus is the log down is rightfully placed um it needs to be in place because just make sure it doesn't go too far or we don't make the virus worse than it already is so elon musk has a point of yes it can affect productivity mental health and general like demeanor of the public but also lockdown has to be in place in order to make sure everyone's protected and safe in long term i think the american government needs to get its shit together and get those survival packages to the people i mean i've heard that there's like there's a lot of people that were supposed to get those stimulus packages but like they didn't get them and whenever they call the government you know business lines they just get some pre-recorded message i think that's the big problem here so what about the people who are struggling to have a job who don't have any source of income now because of this lockdown what do you propose with that that's a large population as well right so the way i see it we can go two ways you know we can we can give financial aid to like everyone that needs it or we can open up the economy and i I can see arguments being made for both sides but uh, my personal opinion is that we should be working on you know making sure that everybody has enough you know money to have food and not starve to death while you know not risking this thing getting out of hand yeah i think in uh uk they have these like yeah care packages and everything but it's for people who are getting for like a particular company like people who aren't in like big companies whatever they're doing whatever low labor jo- uh low skill jobs but at least they're associated with the company but then if you're self-employed which a lot of people are they they don't fall into the category that actually get these packages and so they're the ones that are screwed over 
About the whole giving the people choice to self-quarantine, I mean like if for example us students, if we were given the choice to stop going out, stop hanging out with friends, stop going to the malls, chill out, would we do it? But then we'd reduce our going out in general. We wouldn't go to such public gathering, we wouldn't go to clubs or bars. I think the mindset that we would have would be, oh, if the government isn't worrying about it, if the government is like taking it lightly enough to give us a choice, then surely it's not that bad. Before the lockdown actually officially came in place, I'm sure all of us did reduce our going out. We did. We were a bit more wary of socializing. At least personally, I would. I went clubs less. I still went once but um, <laughs> still go less often. I still think a lot of people that would just be like, oh, coronavirus. That's that's nothing. I can survive more. Like, those people would not regulate it unless the whole country puts a lockdown on them by law. Um, the American army does uh, IQ tests on its soldiers, and there are ranges of people's IQs that even they will not accept, as in literally nothing that they can do with them. So never underestimate people's, you know, capabilities to do dumb things. Basically, we to kill stupid people. Can I just say, you know, Elon Musk, has a company, kind of needs people to get out and go to work and buy his products and whatnot. Uh, he wants the economy to open. Mark Zuckerberg also has a company. His mo uh, business model kind of, you know, needs people to stay at home and on their phones. He supports the lockdown continuing. I say we don't listen to the business people who have a dog in the fight. <laughs>